What is up and welcome back to Motion RC. Today we have a special one for you. This is the Black Horse SBOC available now here at Motion RC. This is one of our first 3D planes I've had a chance to do on the channel and uh, it was a absolute joy putting this one together. Super easy. So if you're interested in more of the setup and specs of this airplane, we're going to go over those after the flight. So stick around for that. But for now, let's get this thing up in the air and let's do some flying. All right, a little quick control check and here we go. I've got my timer set to six minutes of useful throttle on this one. You get a very nice flight time on it. A little bit of a crosswind, just be ready for it with the rudder. And up we go. You know, I'm not a 3D pilot by any means, but I can have a lot of fun with a sport airplane. Flying it sport scale. I'm gonna take that scale part out of that though. I'm not a scaler with this one. And up, knife edge for days. And I'm still playing with it and just getting myself better by the minute. You guys that know me, Flo, I fly jets and warbirds normally. So it's been fun to have a little different challenge here. And just play with it. It will do all the crazy stuff you want. Kick it over, flat spin, roll out. What a machine! They said there are two setups available on the website in our recommended section. This is the 10S setup right now, but we also have this where you can do 4S. If you're going to be doing more sport flying, not really 3D in. I'm not a very good hoverer. I might do it up high for you. As you can see though, the plane is awesome. Look at that, performance. Outside loop, inside loop, up in the cloud. Into a little bit of a barrel roll. And it makes a darn good noise through the uh, airframe of the body. Kick it over, coming down. sweetie very light airframe too <laughs> you can just throw this thing around and have a blast with it let's see find some clouds here we'll pop it up into a quick hover or as best a hover as I can do Not the best hoverer, I told you. <laughs> Can't be good at everything, right? <laughs> but it does a great knife edge too, look at this. Stick it up and it just locks in there. Just an absolute joy and up. And I'm sure it'll alpha too. I really hadn't tried it much because I'm not that great at it. Let's see here, a little higher. We'll have to get this into the hands of a capable 3D pilot here at some point. But there you go, it's high alpha and up high. Remember, hey, if you're learning how to do 3D and fly and this kind of stuff, do it up higher. That way if you make a mistake, you got time to recover it. Now inverted flight is a joy with this airplane. This is a maneuver I've got down. We'll come down a little lower on this one. Look at that thing, man. Look at the bottom of that thing. Gorgeous. I 
I'm just having a blast, guys. Like I said, this is me kind of learning to play with these 3D planes. You're getting to see it in real time. Wow. <laughs> they will do some wild stuff. If you've been thinking about getting into 3D too, this is a great airframe. Even for iMac guys, you know, you can always tone the rates way down and just fly sport scale, doing precision aerobatics. You know, look at that. I don't have a gyro in the model. You could always put one in here, no issue. Uh, but with a plane this size and this stable, it's not needed, but like I said, if a customer feels like they'd like to put one in here, super easy. You could do a Hobby Eagle. Uh, we've got several different options for these larger airplanes, though. And it just is rocking. Uh, as it is, though, I have it on a Hutapa 6 channel. You don't need a lot for uh, electronics on this airplane. Uh, pretty standard. Four servos, ESC, battery timers going off. I'm sure we still have plenty in the gas tank, though. One last pass down the runway here, and we will bring her in for a landing. Oh yeah, horsepower. <laughs> now the one thing I can say is the wind is not our friend right now. It's direct crosswind, probably about 10 mile an hour. And uh, slowing it down has been a exciting. So we're gonna fly a nice long approach. It penetrates the wind forever. That'll do. Donuts. What a plane. All right, let's get this thing over to the bench. Let's give you a battery report, kind of show you around some of the features of this Black Horse s -Bock. So there you have it. This is the Black Horse s -Bock. I'm still kind of new to 3D, but learning it every day. We'll have to revisit this after I get some chances to fly a little bit more with it. Uh, but the airplane has been a lot of fun. It is absolutely gorgeous, too. When you get this one out of the box, it goes together in a breeze. Uh, you do have to glue in your hinges. These have the Dubrow-style hinges that just slot in. And then you use a, like a 5 to a 30-minute epoxy. I prefer 30-minute for working time. But you key those in, get it all taped up, let that set overnight, and then your hinges will be cured. Uh, and like you can see, they are holding up great. You've got tons of control throw deflection on this airplane. Uh, it has been more than plenty for me. Uh, I did run high voltage on my receiver and high voltage for my servos. So this is running on 7.4 volt servos. Uh, and they are the HiTech uh, D645MWs. Uh, which I'm sure we'll have linked on the product page for anybody that's interested in building their plane exactly as I have. Uh, now, one thing I will say with the stock control horns, uh, it is more of a scale acrobatic airplane. If you want to be able to make it flip and do the 3D maneuvers, uh, I actually ordered a little bit longer 25 tooth metal gear or metal uh, control arms uh, and added that to it. Now, like I said, if you're going to fly just standard acrobatics, IMAX style, uh, the control horns that come with the servos are plenty long enough. But if you want to uh, really be able to throw the airplane around in the air, I would definitely highly recommend adding those longer metal arms onto the airplane. Uh, the other cool feature on this is it does come with ball links and all the hardware right out of the box to make it very secure when you build this airplane. Now, let's go on and start looking inside the battery hatch now, and you can start to see the actual airframe and how it is designed. Um, so you can see it's all uh, balsa that is sandwiched with carbon fiber throughout the model. Uh, you can see I also added our shelf liner inside the model. I originally started with the batteries up front, but then ended up to hit CG moving them back to the back. Now, I will say this is a little more tail heavy than I like it, and this is on the stock CG right now. Uh, so one thing I'm probably gonna do is end up sliding my batteries a little bit farther forward as time progresses. 
Uh, now, as far as doing the 3D and things to where it hangs on the tail, I know you like that tail heavy CG. It's just not where I'm comfortable right now, but I know a lot of pilots will like it as this. And this is on two 5S 6,000 milliamp Admiral packs. Uh, and like I said, we do have an option for a 4S or 8S version of it where you could run two 4S packs also. Um, I'm also running it on my Futaba r 7 10 8 sb fast receiver. Uh, it has been bulletproof for me. Make sure if you're doing the same thing, you always want your two receiver wires going in opposite directions. So you have one taped here on the side and I have one taped here in the re rear of the airplane. Uh, and the other thing I added to this was the Benchcraft on off switch. So we do have these available here. If you want to run an onboard pack and not have to unplug and plug it every time, go on and pick one of these up while you're doing the same setup as me. All right, so we got those Admiral 6000s out. Let's get a battery report for you now. All right, so we came down at 55% or 3.877 a cell. All right, so if you've decided to get one of these beautiful Black Horse models, don't forget you can get them only here at MotionRC.com. Hey guys, whether it's land, sea, or air, MotionRC.com has everything you want, and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys.